Hi on MPI brought to you by DigiKey and Andy Fruit. This week's it's Skyworks. Lady Ada, what is this week's on MPI? Oh, I'm glad you asked. This is, I think, the first time we've featured Skyworks, which is so cool. I, again, I always like to point out whenever we get to a new company, we've done many ADI, Maxim, TI, ST, uh, NPIs, but this one is from Skyworks. Um, this is the, let me get the part number correctly, it's the SI. 3404 and SI 3406 POE uh, controller chips. This was actually brought to our attention by our BFF over at DigiKey, David Sandys. He's like, check out this cool chip. And I was like, oh yeah, that is really cool. Let's feature it on Ion MPI. This chip is a almost fully integrated POE compliant uh, power delivery interface and high efficiency switching regulator with combat footprint. Okay, what does it mean? Um, if you want to make something that is POE compatible, so it can uh, work with power over Ethernet and it will be powered over the Ethernet cable. Um, and you want to have it all integrated so you don't need like an external adapter of some sort. Um, this chip pretty much does all the work for you. Now there's two versions, one I think is 13 watts and one is 34 watts. Uh, the 3404 is the lower wattage one. Um, they're available in small packages and you don't need a lot of components uh, to then make your product or project uh, fully uh, powered over Ethernet while it's also getting data from that Ethernet. Very handy um, and very easy to use. Now you're probably wondering, hey, Skyworks, that sounds really familiar. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's the company that their chip fab is featured in such great tights, uh, the Postal Service song from about 20 years wow, ago. Wow, that's a deep cut. That is a deep cut. And here's <laughs> the thing. Uh, first off, they're going on tour yeah, this fall. So. Uh, they didn't sponsor part of this, but I've got tickets. Uh, it's a great album if you haven't read it. The video... Um, it would be great if the Postal Service and Death Cab for Cutie sponsored our show. <laughs> that would be pretty sweet. Um, the uh, What's interesting is I went back to see the video because I remember when the video came out um, that it, it had... Uh, oh, Top by Post and Chat. Thank you. Thank you. It's it, everyone's favorite Skyworks video, correct? Yeah. The, um, the logo is on the chip as they zoom out. It's like a promotional video for Skyworks and it had the Skyworks logo on the chip and it's now blurred out, which is a kind of a bummer. Oh think, man, this is like all the songs in WKRP in Cincinnati you can't listen to anymore. Yeah, think, yeah, uh, yeah. Anyways. Oh, um, I wonder I wonder if there's a version of it that is not blurred out. I somewhere. looked, you know, oh, but like, I mean, how someone many hours can I Someone has a VCR tape somewhere. Somebody please. Videotape. Well, Ooh. the original MTV. <gasps> you know what we could do? What? We could use some of those video um, AI services and put the logos back. Yeah. That's going to be the new thing. Where, okay. all the, where all the logos are blurred. All the blurred logos. We're, we're going to put it back. Hey, Skyworks, don't worry. We got you. Okay, great. Um, but back to the uh, topic at hand. Uh, get tickets for this. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Um, no, yeah. Next slide. Uh, instead of a clicker, I've got a, a Mr. Lady. Yeah. Okay, so power either Ethernet. What is it? If you've never used it before, it's actually quite popular these days. And, we, you know, the Raspberry Pi has a POE hat. And um, we have a bunch of devices around the house that can use a power over Ethernet. Um, basically, historically, you know, if you had devices that were Ethernet, that used Ethernet for communications, you would have the big long Ethernet cable, right? And they would plug into your, uh, the Cat5 would plug into your RJ11 jack. And then um, you would also have a separate power adapter. And here's the thing about the power adapter. It would always be different. It would be like, it, <laughs> we have in the store, like this 35 kit power adapter ends thing, because like, is it 2.5 millimeters or 1.3, 2.2, negative polarity, positive polarity? You always had to like carry on this gigantic wall wart. Um, and usually there's only a couple watts of power. You usually only need like, you know, 12 volts, one amp, maybe 12, two amp. Um, and for a lot of devices, um, you don't need that much current, but they do want to have ethernet, not Wi-Fi, because ethernet's going to be a lot more reliable. You can push a lot more um, data through it. And for stuff like IP cameras, um, like internet cameras or phone systems, you want the reliability of ethernet. You don't want your phone or your camera to stop working because like, you know, the ethernet, uh, the Wi-Fi goes down. So ethernet is more reliable, but you know, you don't want to also have these gigantic wire cables all over the place. And I was, you know, in the text that, in the blog post that goes with this uh, feature, the INMPI, I linked to the video where um, they talk about uh, Sci, Sci Labs, which was purchased, this part was purchased by Skyworks, that's why it starts with SI. They talk about like why, you know, it, why they think Power Ethernet really took off for building um, automation. 
And uh, they made a really good point, I mean, kind of obvious, but at the time I didn't realize it, which is in a lot of buildings um, to lay uh, power cords, like 120 volt or 220 volt, you, you need an electrician, you need permits, you know, you have to be, you have to safety protocols, all are correct. You should be careful because you can get electrocuted if you don't wire up your outlets correctly. But Ethernet can be pulled and routed and attached to anything by an IT professional. Oh, like you don't yeah. need it. You That's don't a good need. Point. Yeah, even in the house, right? We have Ethernet that we just put around the, you know, around the edge of the molding. Um, oh. So, a lot of times when buildings have to do retrofits, if you can do PoE, it's a lot easier than trying to get power into yeah. places that you didn't have. Especially if it's like, oh, I need it on the ceiling for this camera yeah. or to every desk uh, for the uh, PoE. Uh, POE, um, not POE, telephone system, or to the doors for the door entry, for the badge, the badging entry system. Mm. Um, so that's one of the reasons that these are extremely popular is it's, it really cuts down complexity and costs in um, building out. Mm. Uh, you will need to have on the other side a POE capable switch. So this is where the power comes from. So this thing has like a ginormous power adapter. Um, or sometimes they plug directly into 120 volt power, but then you get eight ports of PoE. Each one can do, you know, I mean, a total of 153 watts, um, and they will provide to you uh, 48 volts on the extra pins that you negotiate with. And there's like a whole 802, you know, uh, standard protocol for how they request the PoE. It doesn't just magically come out. You have to have a switch, and you have to have the chip know how to request that data. Um, you know, one option if, you know, if you're they're just showing this, uh, you know, we have a POE splitter. The POE splitter actually has an SI3404 inside of it, which I thought was funny. Um, but this is how it would work. You know, you have the hub on the top there and uh, you see it's powered and there's the Ethernet cord. The Ethernet cord goes into the POE splitter, which then provides data Ethernet and in this case, 5 volt USB power. But this is a little clunky, right? I mean, ideally, you would have it all built into your device. You just plug in the Ethernet cable. You don't need this separate device. So Scilabs uh, developed this protocol, uh, this portfolio uh, for PoE, uh, sold it to Skyworks. It's now a Skyworks sold, and they have both the power managers, the power sourcing equipment, so like what provides the PoE power. And at the bottom, um, you see the uh, latest uh, series, the SI3404 and 3406, Came out a couple of years ago. Um, the power devices, the um, the other end that requests power. Um, but integration is really easy. Um, it's one of the things that I think is uh, really neat about this family. You don't need a lot of components to get going. Almost everything is kind of done automatically. You do need a little bit of protection circuitry um, and some diodes and a big inductor because the inductor, of course, can't be inside of it. But one of the things that Scilab is really good at is like kind of cramming everything inside, so you need a minimum number of components. So for example, the SI3404, the lower cost one, you only need uh, two um, full wave rectifiers on the left there. That's because the, the power coming in from ethernet is um, uh, AC. And then uh, you see there's a couple of passives. You have the sense resistor, um, an inductor, a diode for the buck converter to convert from 48 down. Um, and then the output voltage is just set by the FBH, the feedback uh, resistor. Um, this is the SI3406. It's a little bit more powerful. Uh, it looks like you don't need to have a um, full wave rectifier, but uh, in this case, you do need to have uh, a flyback inductor. It looks like it doesn't do the buck mode, but maybe I, I, I don't trust me completely. It could be that it does. There's also isolated um, versions. These are the non isolated, but um, if you see here, there's uh, eval boards, and I can show on the overhead real fast. This is the uh, isolated. Um, eval board for the SI uh, 3406. Yeah, thank you. I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, wait. Um, and you see here, this is the chip. Uh, and then on the bottom, you have the full wave uh, rectifier. And then here you see the um, opto isolator, it looks like, and then a um, uh, flyback inductor. So this is um, fully isolated. So you don't have to worry about this ground uh, messing with that ground, I think, for. Um, medical and other applications you might need to have isolated power. Okay, so let's go back. Um, and all these eval boards are available at DigiKey, except for the one I just bought, but uh, most <laughs> of them are. Um, uh, for the 3404, 3406, isolated, non-isolated buck, non-buck, etc. So pick those up. And the chips themselves, there's a lot of them in stock. 
And they're like under two bucks in quantity, which is a really, really good deal. Um, It's cheaper than just like getting a, because you can't use um, non-switching power adapters anymore, which is good because the uh, uh, transformer based ones were very heavy and also um, had a lot of like vampire power. So for like only a couple bucks like this, and then a couple of diodes and um, uh, inductors, so maybe a bill of materials about $2. Uh, you could add power of Ethernet to any of your product or project designs. I'd like, I'd like to have a company called Vampire Power. Vampire Power. Yeah, cool. All right, that's this week's INOPI. INOPI.